Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Today we're gonna look at a film by Dom Blue. God damn it, how come he keeps turning up here? I mean, it's not like the guy isn't a good director. He's directed some great movies, like The Land Before Time, An American Tale, and The Secret of Nim, one of my all-time favorite films. But much like Schwarzenegger, for every good film he's made, he's also made a bad one. And not only are they bad, they're weird. Unbelievably weird. Case in point, the pebble and the paint. One perfect pebble, just one home. If you took a combination of NyQuil and Vicodin and decided to watch Happy Feet for an hour, this is probably what you'd see. Yet another strange and often clumsily animated film that wants to look nice as opposed to make any logical sense. It's weird, it's sloppy. I have 20 minutes to waste, so let's take a look. There is a charming tradition observed by the Adeli penguins. Okay, which British chick will have little to no character outside of narrating is this? Jenny Wallace? Who's that? Oh, the woman from Oliver. Neat. So she talks about how penguins use a pebble to give to their loved ones as a mating ritual, which starts off our tale of the pebble and the penguin, as the storybook explains. Oh, I mean, as the songbook explains. Apparently the film is so cheap it couldn't afford a storybook, so I've resorted to the sheet music instead. So as the credits roll, we get a unique, but still very strange opening. It's the penguin swimming and singing through the sheet music of the movie. Which looks nice, but what the hell's the point of it? Are they gonna go tap dancing through the script next, marking off all the bad lines they don't like? The script would only be a page long if they did that! By the way, is it me, or does this sound like the meeting song from The Great Muppet Caper? Now and forever, I'll show her I care. First time you see her, no magical change. What hack songwriter wrote this anyway? Ah, that explains a lot. From the brilliant mind who brought you Mary the Mole. We'll have a little world whatever. In fact, that's Probably how Manolo agreed to do this film. He's sick and tired of people saying his kid songs are unoriginal, so he shouted, You show them my music! Notes and everything! Then they'll see I really wrote this shit! Knock it off! Romance has nothing to do with it, listen. You know what? You know, I don't think a pebble should be that important. Marina, if you don't care about the pebble, how will you choose? These are all So our narrator finally starts to introduce us to our characters. Of all the penguins in all the world, she walks into mine. The most romantic was Hubie. So this is Hubie, played by Martin Short. He's in love with a female penguin named Marina, played by Annie Golden. They make awkward small talk that's supposed to represent a relationship as an evil penguin named Drake, played by Tim Curry, watches over them. Marina doesn't know it yet, but she's going to be my wife. Oh, I didn't get these pingroids for nothing, you know. So as they sit on top of that thing from The Nightmare Before Christmas, they start to sing a song so forced and contrived it would make it into a Teddy Ruxpin cartoon. Sometimes I wonder what the colors mean. Uh, why don't you figure out what that lyric means first? It's like saying, I want to figure out what the sounds smell like. Like your eyes. Where was I? Choosing. Uh, is that Choker trying to Joker? I don't think it's nonsense at all. Even if you are a bit wacky. The rookery buzzed with excitement. All the bachelors took to the beaches to find their engagement pebbles. You know, it's a shame this came out when it did, because I could so easily see Morgan Freeman narrating all this. Here we see the penguin try desperately to get a laugh. His antics fall short to underwritten slapstick and heavily confused timing. Thus, he will not find a mate. He will spend the rest of his years knowing that his sperm will never carry on. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. Wish I may, wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. This is the wishing star. Our attorneys advise you to stop ripping off Disney or we'll sue you for the little that you have. Thank you and never call us again. <gasps> but thankfully, the last son of Krypton is sent to Earth as Hubby plans to use one of the scorching hot rocks that 
doesn't seem to burn him at all, as a pebble for Marina. But unfortunately, Drake catches him before he can see her. So, nerd, I hear you want to be a big ladies' man. Boy, Tim Curry's American accent is almost as good as his Romanian accent, isn't it? Free now of the chains of Ceausescu, traveling the world, doing good. Is it wrong to say the muscle-bound penguin sounds more credible? No! No! <laughs> Hope you can swim. Well, he is a penguin. <laughs> so while in the water, he comes across the world's friggin' largest seal! I don't think this means that the penguins are just small. No, no, we see them compared to the size of humans. The regular size. This seal must have been like a radioactive mutation experiment at SeaWorld. <gasps> so because of the storm and the seal, I guess, he can't swim back. So we cut to him in a cage. Hi, when did that happen? When he comes across a bunch of other penguins who also somehow knitted their own clothes. If you love the great indoors, talk anymore. You can buy a pack of Skittles and it will result in a musical number. Also, has anybody noticed? They're out of their friggin' cages! Just leave! Stop torturing us with Manilow's rejected commercial jingles! And then we all Just then, another penguin is thrown to the cellar named Rocco, played by James Belushi. Who's with me? Who's for busting out of here? Bunch of bird brains, seal bait. Get me out of here. Give me some money. So Hubie, through his magic space pebble, can see what's going on back home. I want you to be my mate. Drake, <laughs> I love Hubie. I deeply sympathize. Dude, this scene is so blurry you could host a Barbara Walters special in it. But remember, you must choose a mate before the full moon mating ceremony or... <sighs> They banished. That's the law. Really? They had to make a law about that? Was there really some penguin who was just refusing to mate so they had to create a law to enforce it? Sometimes I don't want to know about the animal kingdom. Sir, take me with you. You talking to me? Yes, sir, I am. Don't call me sir. Call me Rocco. So Hubie and Rocco work out a plan to get themselves off the ship. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, come back here! You're gonna be Gordon Fisherman's fish sticks and like it! The weather started getting rough, the tiny ship was tossing. So as they perform Penguin Amistad, they get off the ship and swim for some Hawaiian island. You're lost, and I'm looking at a dead penguin. Getting back to Marina is all that matters to me. I mean, Rocco, look! I dream about her night and day. I see her face when I close my eyes. I do things when that happens. Things that my penguin minister says makes baby Jesus cry. So while Rocco refuses to help Hubie, by the way, high unfinished fine, Hubie gets Rocco to admit what he's really been looking for. Oh, I got something. What is it? You're looking at it. <laughs> you wanna bonk a seagull? You you, you wanna fly? Don't laugh! Rocco, you've gotta just accept it. No! I'm gonna fly, and no one's gonna stop me! I'm flying! So Hubie convinces Rocco that he knows a penguin named Waldo, last known photograph, who can help show him how to fly if he gets him back home. Captain, full speed ahead! Here we go! <laughs> Meanwhile, at... Frankenberry's house, we see Drake continues to try and put the moves on Marina. No! Oh, I get it. You're joking. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Oh god! Another song! The endless musical of West High Story can fucking continue. Say yes, my love, and go with a winner. Is it weird to say that during this song, all I'm thinking about is why penguins have hands? Don't make me laugh. <laughs> I'll slap my knee. Blah, 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 Tim Curry is evil. So we cut back to our heroes who found a very odd island of wood as Hubie admits a sad secret that he's been keeping from Rocco. I... Rocco, there's something you should know. Your modern life is no longer in reruns. 
Waldo isn't real. What? I needed you to to show me the way home. I, I didn't think you'd do it if I just asked. Next you'll be telling me the cake is a lie! Oh! No, you! You decided to lie to me! Oh, come to on! To drag me through 3,000 miles of water and killer whales! <laughs> Because they laughed for no apparent reason, I guess that means they're friends again. Makes sense to me. Meanwhile, back at home, we find that musical numbers don't need to have a point or a lead in anymore. No, they can just start and come out of nowhere. Sometimes I close my eyes and say a prayer. She's sad, next. We get yet another chase scene with the world's largest seal, which seems to be Don Bluth's new underwater cats. What's taking that seal so long anyway? Is he just enjoying his time shitting around with them? I know what you're thinking. Maybe if I are six shots or only five, you've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? So they swim, swim, swim around until they finally outrun the beast, which results in yet another argument. You risk your life to get back to that chick and give her that blasted pebble! You're crazy! You're insane! You're... you're amazing! Boy, Rocco really seems to mood swing to the convenience of the plot, doesn't he? Get out of my face, I didn't say nothing like you that. You do like me. I don't like anybody. Oh, yes, you do. Do <laughs> and I knew it all along. Oh God, no! No, 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 not another one. Hey, Rocco, I g guess this means we put our differences on ice. All right, I'll take that joke. I'll even laugh at it. Ha ha ha! But please, not another one. <laughs> Look how we get along. God! Please, no more! I'm done! I'm done with these fucking songs! There's like a bajillion of them in this movie! Can you just say things? Can you just speak for one minute? That's just pretend. We'll find our way through stormy weather. Just you and me right to the end. If you'll excuse me, I feel rather dirty. I'm gonna take a bath for a minute. What do you call a flower before it opens? A bud. I love it when you call me bud. Oh. You mean you like me? A little. You mean it? Don't push it. I'll not slide. I got me. So if you're still alive after your brush with death, the penguins catch a ride on yet another ship. How do they keep finding all these ships? But they run into a rather hungry bunch of whales looking for some penguin chow. So after the whales finally piss off, we see that Rocco apparently got killed in the process. Of course he did. Oh, Rocco. Well, after that 100% not fake out, we see that Drake has kidnapped Marina to force her to be his bride. <laughs> Get your filthy flippers off my girl! <laughs> <laughs> Man tits away! Well, 
Yeah, what do you think was gonna happen, dumbass? Get up! Get up! Now open your eyes! I didn't come 3,000 miles and lose my best buddy to be stopped by the likes of you! I came to lose my virginity! Come on! Ah! So he defeats Drake and... Oh, what a surprise! Rocco isn't dead! Yeah, you, you really had me going there, movie. Good one. Say your prayers, you fool! No! My conveniently shaped location! Dude, that was a pretty harsh death! I mean, just because you don't show blood doesn't mean it's not gruesome. In fact, let's put some blood in that scene and see how it looks. Yeah. Disturbing. <laughs> yeah, what they don't show you is the angle he's really going. <laughs> no, of course Rocco can fly now, breaking the laws of nature and gravity because he ate a fairy, I don't know. But it seems to have saved the day. So Marina and Hubby get together, they fly into the sunset, and they all wear Santa hats. Because... Yeah, I guess this was a Christmas film. That's the pebble on the penguin. So did any of it work? Well, how do I put this? Out of all the bad Don Bluth movies, this one is probably the least bad. It almost works. The voice acting's not bad, and while the animation can be sloppy, it's still Don Bluth animation. Which is always impressive. It just gets lost in the generic story and those few really weird turns that either work to Blue's advantage or don't. And in this case, they don't. It's not really a film I'd recommend for kids, as there's much better films to show them, but as is, it's not terrible. And if a kid really wanted to see it, I guess there'd be no harm. And besides, it's just false advertising. When I hear the title of The Pebble and the Penguin, this is what I expect to see. Now that would have been an interesting crossover. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, I remember it, so you don't have to! Now and forever, I'll show her I care I'll find her the rarest stone And maybe at the pair